The absence of a stomach in platypuses and short-beaked echidnas has baffled scientists for centuries, but a study has found a specific gene that may be the cause of their strange digestive system. So, how do these unique creatures digest their food, and how do they get by without a conventional stomach? The great thing about the stomachs is you can relatively compare apples to apples. We can look at certain compartments and say, this is where the storage is, this is where the, the stomach acid comes from, um, and these are the kinds of cells that we should expect, let's say. Uh, when you look at the echidna, and especially the platypus, the platypus is well-renowned for this, you, you basically see an absence of a lot of these features. So the storage compartment is basically dwindled into nothing. I mean, they say that the, the stomach of the platypus is as big as the top segment of your thumb comparison to the whole animal. So relative to, to body size, absolutely nothing. A lot of the cells that are responsible for creating the stomach acid, for digesting kind of the food stuff that comes through, we don't see them. We don't see the cell types. Basically, they scoop up their prey. They don't have uh, any teeth, which is another thing. Uh, and they actually have a really coarse kind of skin within their, their mouth and they basically grind the food there. What it's believed is happening is basically all of the all of the work that would otherwise be chemical in the stomach, so the kind of the chemical breakdown of the food stuff, um, is otherwise happening mechanically, most likely in the, the mouth, and then further down the intestines, they're potentially just absorbing the food stuff. The platypus was actually one of the very first genomes to be released. We've had quite a lot of data in terms of the genetics of, of the platypus and now the echidna. The echidna was released in about 2021. And what we do is we basically look for easy comparisons between any kind of closely related or, or distantly related organism in their genetics to see what is present, what is missing, what has been shuffled, anything like that. And we can usually relay that back to the kind of biology of the organism. The body plan gene, they're basically fundamental in the evolution of the animal body plan and they're fundamental in doing lots of really important things during the development of the fetus and especially in the gastrointestinal tract. I found surprisingly that this gene is actually inactive in the platypus and echidna. So it's absolutely bizarre. We, we basically found a missing component that should be responsible for some key parts of the development. We can say that if it is missing in the echidna and if it is missing in the platypus, we can look into some work that's been done usually through fossil records or through kind of molecular dating, as they call it, just kind of looking into the timing of things through a molecular frame. And it would go back to at least the common ancestor of the platypus and echidna. So as with a lot of science, a lot of the foundational research usually leads to the breakthroughs afterwards. Um, but with the platypus and echidna, the great thing is that a lot of the molecular research that we do, it'll always aid in their conservation and it'll always aid in, in further projects down the line because a lot of the previous data we were getting in terms of observational was scarce. We, we, it was really tough to kind of pinpoint down what was going on in them. And that's why we need to take a molecular approach because it's, you know, it's basically non-invasive. We can, we can see a lot about their biology if we're just using, you know, little bits of, of cells and whatnot. This will help in tangent with some recent work that's been going into modeling basically the digestion, the digestive anatomy and the kind of feeding behavior and diet that is very necessary right now in echidna and platypus conservation.